Let's have more now on our top story. The case of Hakim Al Arabi and what he faces if he's sent back to Bahrain. Well, I'm joined by the president of the International Council for the Rehabilitation of Torture Victims, Jorge Arouche. Jorge, good to have you on the world this evening. Great to be here. Now, how concerned are you for Hakim with this latest development out of Thailand? Well, we're very concerned. I mean, certainly being 64 days in detention is, you know, is by itself, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, terrible. Um, but if he were uh, extradited back to Bahrain, I think he, you know, would be facing uh, very strong, uh, uh, you know, uh, possibility of being tortured again, certainly imprisoned, and you know, possibly death. I mean, I think it's. Uh, uh, it is essential that uh, we redouble our efforts, you know, to bring him back as he should be. I mean, he is under the protection of Australia. Well, how might his status as an alleged torture survivor have a bearing on his case? Well, uh, the, the uh, Thailand is, is a signatory to the Convention Against Torture, and the first pillar of that convention is that of prevention. That means that not only should you not uh, torture people in your own country, but you should also not allow people to be transported to places where there's a well-funded fear of torture. And in the case of Hakim, I think that uh, he certainly fulfills that criteria. And what does this, this development say about Thailand's apparent attitude towards refugees? Well, it's very concerning. Uh, Thailand, uh, I believe, is not a signatory to the uh, Refugee Convention, but certainly should honour the fact that uh, uh, Hakim was uh, given protection by Australia, and certainly Australia is, uh, you know, can be you know, faulted in many uh, ways, but certainly it's got a very rigorous process before it provides uh, protection and refugee status to people. And, and uh, Hakim could have fulfilled all of those criteria to be, uh, to be given protection by Australia. And the principle of non-refoulement uh, uh, certainly is one that, uh, you know, most uh, countries you know, around the world, uh, and uh, certainly everyone that's a signatory to the convention should abide by it. And Jorge, can any comparisons be made between Hakim's case and that of Rahaf um, al Kunin's uh, in terms of how you hope to see uh, Hakim's case treated? Look, hopefully, I mean, this, 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 that was a very good decision that, that certainly took into account, you know, that, that a lot of the, the complexities of the situation. And hopefully, uh, you know, the, the uh, Thai judiciary, uh, judiciary uh, would act in the same way. It is a pity, nevertheless, that he's gotten to the point that he needs to go to court. Uh, you know, he should never uh, have gotten to that point. But, you know, certainly it, it gives us a reason to hope that, you know, there will be an impartial hearing by an impartial judiciary that will uh, abide by, you know, the, the principles of international human rights law. And, you know, the, the, it's... Uh, and what he, the, the, the things that he must do in accordance with the convention that is signed. And now that it is going to be taken through the courts, whatever happens on Monday, it is likely to be a long, drawn-out process. How do you think this might affect Hakim? Well, badly. Look, uh, it, it's uh, being held in, 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 in detention, in, in, in a prison for 64 days, uh, is something that you know, would have an effect on, on anyone. I believe, you know, he seems to be, a, you know, a, a, a very strong uh, individual. But uh, nevertheless, uh, he would have experienced, uh, uh, taught, you know, he has experienced torture, has experienced imprisonment in Bahrain. So, uh, I, I, you know, the, 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 uh, the possibility of being uh, extradited back there, the possibility of facing, you know, that again must be terrifying. So, the longer that this situation goes on, obviously, the bigger the impact that we, it will have on him. Well, Hakeem's case has attracted a lot of international attention and uh, support, as we've seen protests today in Australia. Um, how key is this in putting pressure on Thailand and Bahrain uh, to, well, what uh, many people hope uh, will see him released? Look, I think it's absolutely crucial. Unfortunately, these sort of situations happen a lot more in the world than we would like to see. Uh, but very few people have advocates, you know, as strong as, you know, Craig Forster and other people have been uh, uh, in Australia. And I think that, 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 that that's a, a tremendous asset for Hakim and some, something that augurs well, you know, for a good outcome. 
Uh, the fact that now uh, more and more, uh, um, you know, sports institutions, you know, like FIFA and, 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 and the IOC are coming on board. The fact that politicians in Australia and the Prime Minister have advocated for Hakim. The, f the fact that more voices internationally are coming on board and the fact that civic society in Australia and I believe in some other places is also taking an, an increasing interest in the case and in, in the implications of the case because you know if uh, uh, refugees can you know go to another country you know and, and, and be refiled and sent back to, to the country that uh, caused you know um, the persecuted in the same place it really falls a convention you know into into something that you know means that you cannot leave uh, as a refugee the country that's giving you protection which uh, is uh, you know absolutely goes against the convention. So I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's a tremendous asset that uh, you know so much interest has developed around Hakim. Well what are Hakim's rights as a refugee? He really shouldn't have found himself in this position in the first place in a jail in Thailand should he? No absolutely. Australia has given him protection uh, I believe that he was travelling on, on a, a UN papers. That means that you know the UN, you know, is recognised his need for protection, and therefore he would have the same rights as anybody that you know that is a resident in Australia. So he should not uh, have been put in a situation of being sent back to the country where this you know there would have to be you know a, a, a quite a large onus of proof that he uh, uh, was at risk uh, in and, and, and had been tortured. So absolutely not. He should never have, uh, have uh, been put in detention. Jorge Arosh, thanks so much for joining the world tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank you.